Crystal, say good day. Hey everyone, this is Rich. And this is the story of um, how you can systemically um, frame someone and kill them. It's a story of murder and um, injustice and a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. It's about heinous victimization and a, and a state, local and federal government conspiracy um, to um, maim, shame, blame and um, absolutely desecrate one singular person, um, which is me. And uh, look, um, I'm in the car at the moment because um, I'm squatting. Um, I'm not a happy camper because um, I'm a millionaire on paper, a multi-millionaire. However, um, the powers that be have oppressed me um, so heinously with such vile desecration that um, I have been rendered a um, homeless, voiceless, complainless, um, absolute mute. I'm a um, refugee in my own country, uh, which has um, citizens' rights and it has um, whistleblower protections. Now, um, I'll show you in the video um, that's coming, because I'm going on my, on my way to a place where I'm squatting. Crystal, say hello. Can you say, I love you? Can you say, I love you? Crystal, I love you. <laughs> yeah, she loves us. We love you too. We'd love some justice. Um, I believe that um, people are ready to prejudice someone who's um, got a prior um, label of mental illness when I've actually got a PhD, um, so really proving critical thought. Um, look, I'm on the way to a place where I'm squatting um, and there, with the following video, I'm going to make a statement um, to the Federal um, Officer of Prime Minister and Cabinet. I'm going to sign a declaration um, before the National Parliament and I'm requesting that I get my um, compensation. And should that, so this is, serves two purposes. First of all, it's a public document that goes to identify and shame the government as a murderous conspiracy um, that victimized me. And further, that when I was dead, um, it wasn't sufficient um, that that occur. In fact, after I suffered a fatal injury, which the Hospital Freedom of Information documents say was a fatal injury and a lethal attempt, um, it was then heinously covered up. Um, my business was framed. My NDIS was ruined. Um, the agents of oppression, which is systemic and act via um, uh, proxy in, in terms of like there's an agenda and it's served with faceless people to um, embolden the um, methodology of the purpose. The purpose is to render me a homeless, neutral, voiceless vagrant and it is designed to make me suffer. Now, um, I've suffered enough and this serves two purposes. One, it's going to inform the public and my um, supporters, and I've been a very public advocate of um, 25 plus years in um, the recovery sphere, advocating on behalf of people who are more marginalised than myself. And now I'm finding myself that I am the marginalised and persecuted one, and um, I have no help, I have no food, I have no money, I have um, a the shell of a rental property that I squat in. Um, I deserve more and I'm going to present this as video evidence with a backup website with all of the evidence that you will require. I want that acknowledged and I want it acknowledged by the government that this in malicious and conscious and systemic and over many many years, which has intensified over the last I don't know, five years, is a heinous way to um, identify, victimise and vilify one individual for the sole purpose of enlarging the space in which that person who has been suicidal and has attempted suicide from systemic oppression um, and grief of my friend who died, this whole movement is designed 
and it's got one thing in mind. That is to lengthen and delay and defer any justice, prosperity, maim, shame and blame me in order to um, enlarge the space in which I may kill myself. Now, it has occurred to me and it will be proven that and, and everything on the website will be proven and I would like um, all of that multimedia evidence, my recordings and my um, PDFs and from um, emails from many agencies to be acknowledged by um, the, um, the uh, Prime Minister and the Attorney's Office for a compensation. I don't want much money. Money has never been my currency. Um, I actually just want a simple life free from oppression. I get death threats at the door. Um, that is not cool. I can't go to police. That is not cool. I died in the hospital, literally died. If I wasn't accidentally found and reluctantly revived, I wouldn't be speaking. That's not cool. Um, what's also not cool is um, that I was so systemically framed that no one actually saw an issue with that. That's because this movement exploits already existing prejudices in society within my family and my friends and broader society in general that amplify what I've already um, acknowledged that um, has to do with me. So either I'm gay, I've used drugs in the past, or um, I'd suffered a, a, some kind of label. Um, these are all reasons um, why I find it so hard to move forward and why it is so easy to exploit me and to desecrate me in psychosocial ways with my family, with my friends, with support workers who come in to assist me with my litig litigation. And further to that, something happens. I don't know what, I don't know how they do it. Those people always leave. I have not got one support. I can't go to a doctor. In the whole year since I suffered a fatality in a hospital, and then that was covered up by the, by the state ombudsman who said there's nothing to see here, you know, because it was me who killed myself. But, I mean, they had a duty of care, right? You're not allowed to kill yourself in a hospital. That's pretty baked. Um, so, it, it's just so preposterous. Like, that attempted suicide was not mental illness related. They pumped me up with stupid amount of mind altering drugs and I well explained before the CAT team took me in there exactly what's fucking happening. And I know precisely and I'm grossly aware of the movement to desecrate me, maim me, and to also cover my evidence. And you know that I'm a powerful person, otherwise you wouldn't want to kill me. And that is what this is about. You can't actually kill me and knock me off. That would be um, too obvious. But you can attack me by exploiting my family, my friends. Uh, you can attack me by reducing my prosperity. You can attack me after hospital by intentionally getting the company that hosts my 20 year website with all my evidence to, 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 um, to, to oppose this, um, to, um, to desecrate it, to destroy it. I got one email, it said, your email address, richmclean.com.au they accused me ironically of being conspiratorial so um without further notice you are you haven't got a website we've deleted everything all your emails are gone good luck with your call case now another thing they're um destroying evidence before a court now you'd think that running a business in victoria as i did for a number of for a few years that um that it would be absolutely crystal clear that if someone destroyed your very means by communicating with the world as a professional person and as an academic and as you know a friend and um, a lover and all those other things that if that was destroyed that there would be a price to pay unfortunately for me how cooked it is is that business.vic.gov.au didn't care um, business.gov.au didn't care they said to go to the um, small business and family ombudsman, went there, they didn't care. 
went to the telecommunications industry. I was with them. They didn't care. Um, now, it has occurred to me I've reverse engineered this thing. They are geared to set me up to fail or kill me. And should I come forward in a powerful way to hold them to account, I already have evidence that I've been framed as a rapist, as a pedophile, as a dog fucker. Um, and what I didn't know until I got out of hospital, after I'd killed myself out of, um, out of, out of, out of an absolute hopelessness that, that they had consciously rendered via proxy over years. And the fact that um, my sexual abuse case where I was the victim as a child didn't get over the line with the magistrate because I had been framed as an extortionist simply because I made a complaint about a GP that was absolutely valid. And further to that, um, I'll just wrap up now because I'm going to go to the place and then make a statement. Um, I cannot go to the police. I'm a failed whistleblower. I'm bankrupt. I haven't got food. I haven't got a doctor. I haven't got a psychologist a year after I killed myself. <laughs> I say killed myself, I'm like I'm post-deaf. I haven't got a psychiatrist. I haven't got um, any medication, or some medication, but, um, but medication that I need. I haven't got health care. I haven't got the NDIS. They refuse flat out to pay my invoices. They are systemically local government, federal, oppressing, denying, delaying, deferring. It's worked. I've had enough and I'm presenting this both to the public and both to the um, government. Either way, this has got to happen. My former partner is an ASIO agent. He um, insisted I was on a pension whilst he was earning big bloody bucks at ASIO. So underpinning me through a few um, points of um, genesis, one of those points is that he has threatened a hitman on me. He's embezzled millions of dollars in tax evasion and got a slap on the wrist by ASIO, his mates, you know, because people with money protect people with money. And um, they're trying to cover it up. He was also admitted to me he was president of murder. He stole my car. He left me with his dying dog, which I had to then euthanize, but which was named Chopper because he knew Chopper Reed. He's a criminal, narcissistic, um, sociopathic narcissist and the sad thing is he'll never be happy see my currency is not money my currency is like actually um, uh, um, um, just laughing enjoying the breeze my beautiful dog I don't need much however um, the government will do one of two things they will ignore this whole thing which I will sign a government stat deck on and present the evidence which is on killhim.info my website and um in addition to that, <clears throat> if the government don't do anything, I would request that the public support me in my, um, my, my ability to have a simple life. That is with my bare basic needs met. At, at the very least, I would like someone to find me a um, lawyer who can simply acknowledge the relationship my former narcissistic partner and I had, and that... Um, he owes me half a million dollars. So, um, yeah, so um, you'd think it'd be easy to get a lawyer to do that kind of stuff. But when you've got a hitman threatened on you and blackmailed with jail, um, that's a really hard thing to do. Especially hard when your name and your date of birth and your email and everything to do with you is actually um, on a blacklist. I'm blacklisted from so many places. You wouldn't even believe. But anyway, um, and and it's heinous, it's a heinous local, state and federal and private government conspiracy to maim, shame, blame, victimise and desecrate in every way one person. It's worked, you can't take my solo. That's mine, that's mine to have. And further, I just want to mention that you would think that as a person who's complained for a whole year after a suicide, um, which was deemed fatal in the um, Freedom of Information. <laughs> By example, like if I wasn't accidentally found and filled up with blood, I'd be dead. I've noticed a severe lack of um, 
cognitive ability and memory. My face has dropped and um, I can't feel my feet. Um, it's like they've got socks on. They're numb. I can't feel my feet. I keep falling over in the shower. Um, when I can afford the water. Um, now, you'd think that would be an obviously litigative thing. However, the Health Complaints Commissioner, the Mental Health Complaints Commissioner, the Office of the Australian Information Commissioner, who do the FOIs, and um, the um, even the uh, State Ombudsman, Ben Calder. Hi, Ben. How are you going? Fuck it. Um, are paid like cowards to tow the company line, which is from the government, to desecrate me and, 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 and violate my human rights and my very dignity to survive. Um, and they do it with impunity and they do it with freedom from litigation because I'm framed legally and they do it with immunity from prosecution. And this is a vile way to treat one person who simply wanted an atonement and an acknowledgement of the suffering that I've been through. Further to that, um, the hospital CEO, Dave Stevenson, who rejected me care and who who knew, because Dr Kumar was the um, doctor at the hospital, that uh, my partner uh, was threatening and violent and all that kind of stuff, they absolutely knew he was from ASIO and they absolutely knew all that was happening. And um, Stevenson, the CEO of the hospital, um, told me personally on an email if I want to sue the hospital for the injustices that occurred, i.e. the um, desecration of the human rights um, um, thing with an illegal uh, contraband used to slit my artery open and bleed out in the bottom of a loony bin shower from systemic oppression that's lasted years, um, then I should sue him personally and directly. Now, with that amount of audacity comes um, a price. I'm not willing to stand for that. I'm not willing to stand for people with money, privilege and power to have immunity against prosecution because I'm dead set fucking framed. And I refuse to um, back down and I refuse not to be vocal when my family has um, have been prejudiced and persecuted against me, everyone has. Because I'm in the two heart basket. Now, it's very clear to me what's going on because I'm the existential person that's had to deal with the grief and the oppression and the elongation of my very troublesome um, health and justice issues that were um, lasted so long, my sexual abuse case lasted three years, um, they didn't even give an outcome to the lawyer, I mean that's illegal, and the magistrate wrote to me when I begged for an outcome, as if like did it even happen, like I don't know, she wrote to me that I was doomed to fail from the start, that's very colourful language for a um, sexual um, abuse survivor. And further, another vocat case is that I saved a man from being fucking <laughs> heinously fucking, I thought I was going to kill him. And so I intervened. Very stupid idea. There was um, probably six of them and two of us. I had broken bones, lacerations. It was an absolute cook-up. We got smashed. There is a video of the incident, but vocat being a .vic.gov.au or a .gov.au thing, they um, pinned it on me. I was the one left behind bloodied and broken filling out the police report. Um, however, um, they pinned it on me as the principal aggressor. Rich, but ba I'll get nothing. Now, um, this goes back in time even further as another genesis point, my autobiography about my um, disturbances when I was a young person. There's regretful sex, sure. But, um, you know, framing me as a rapist and all that kind of stuff, I haven't raped anyone. Um, it, it's, it, it's exploiting the very... Um, vulnerabilities that I have um, that um, are talked about in the book and the movement actually accentuates and works into them in order to turn people against me. Um, and I just want to say lastly that I'm a failed whistleblower with ASIC, with APRA, with the Commonwealth Ombudsman and with IBAC. And I can't go to the police. I've tried many times to report these crimes and they just 
white wash blank this at me I'm on the phone and um um and so um then um I think on this lady's trying to get my attention she thinks I'm talking to her but um and I just want to say with with Michaelia Cash the Attorney General um Australian Human Rights C Commission free kick a million dollar case to a super company because um they're a part of the government but I actually went under their nose and went straight to the company and got a conciliation so it's obvious that someone at the Australian Human Rights Agency has said we must rob Rich bereft of any finance and not give him an outcome now they're the Australian Human Rights Commission my human rights were trampled on and they free kicked it to the other team now <laughs> this goes the same with work cover goes the same with Comcare oh, Paul Fowler, the top at Comcare, he's the one who rejected me on a technicality. But um, I tried to get WorkSafe to um, acknowledge my um, my um, my appeal with Comcare for work cover, which I am validly uh, and legally able to get because I had to leave work because of another vocat case and another incident relating to the sexual abuse and the client that had heinous rape and incest issues. But um, He's the head, he was the old head of WorkSafe. Oh, what a fucking coincidence. Paul, you're absolutely corrupt. And um, I've spoken to many people in high places, including, oh, the Comcare thing has now been adjourned to the AAT. And all these things, AAT, Comcare, um, AFCA's another one. AFCA's holding on to over $2 million in overdue determinations. They are doing that with impunity and they are doing it because they can and they're doing it as attacking me via proxy to rob me and render me homeless i've begged them and hcf my insurer to um simply pay me the um the income assessed because i left work because of an issue now obviously when you're a public person with someone who's got a prior um label attached to them you're absolutely fucking desecrated I begged them, I, I put some beg into it, <laughs> I begged HCF and AFCA to please, please, please get to the point and get to the determinations, but I wasn't aware that the delay and defer tactics are still happening and AFCA hold on to over a million, two million dollars in overdue determinations and they have in-house prejudice lawyers to them. Um, they are run and overseen by AFSA, and AFSA is overseen by the government, and I can't be a whistleblower. So, in actual fact, in every fucking way, I'm absolutely cooked. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is the story of Rich McLean and murder, and how to fucking frame, maim, and desecrate someone, personally, professionally, um, in finances, in prosperity, and degrade them of human rights. Um, I can't go to the Human Rights Commission, I can't complain about the Human Rights Commission and I'm actually banned <laughs> from, from, from absolutely any complaint with the Victorian Human Rights and Equal Opportunity Commission who, who, who say that victimisation is a crime. Hello, I tried to explain this to them, but they blocked me at every turn and so I went to the Ombudsman and the Ombudsman said she was just explaining what they do. Yes, it was outside the area of her expertise. That's when I get a lot. Anyway, this is Rich um, signing off. I'm gonna go do the video now. All the evidence that you'll need to know is on um, killhim.info. And I'm gonna present this to the Officer of Prime Minister and Cabinet for conciliation. And if I do not get a conciliation within a certain period of time, which I will specify on the email when I send this video evidence in, and the following video, when I get to my squat, <laughs> um, I will hopefully get some acknowledgement from the public and the very fucking many hundreds, uh, tens and hundreds of thousands of people that I've helped over my career of altruism, helping other people in vulnerable situations with less prosperity or rights or um, dignity or more marginalized than myself and I did that for 25 years mostly through altruism and I expect that um, hopefully um, people will see that um, that I'm not to blame it's not my shame to have it's yours and um, 
in further to that, um, I just want to say that when every pawn in this veneer of the movement to desecrate me acts, they are acting with cowardice. I know what I'd die for, and I died valiantly for it. It, it, it trying to change your perspective on the world. Every person who's being paid by the government to um, to kick the can down the road, delay, defer, and um, aid and abet my death is actually um, co-conspiring in the murder that has already happened. And um, I've lived, I'm alive, I'm not dead, and if you kill me, you can't take my soul, and um, I plan not to kill myself, and um, uh, I'm just going to go forward and hopefully get some acknowledgement from the many people I've helped in the past and um, to further um, just really just live a simple life, you know. That, that's all I want. I don't want millions of dollars, even though I'm a multi, multi-millionaire on paper or, you know, if, if, I, if there was any justice. So um, I'm going to sign off now and go to my squat with no food, no psychologist, no psychiatrist, no money. I haven't got a cent. And... Um, and I'm just going to try and explain, and I've worked vehemently to put this website together, um, killing.info, with all the evidence you'll ever need. The government and the public can peruse that evidence, and I would, it, failing the government, which has already failed because Michaelia Cash wrote back and said, sorry to hear about your experience with Comcare, here's the SANE helpline. My book was SANE's book of the year, and um, I was a SANE speaker. Jack Heath, the CEO, told me to let it go and move on. Uh, I just, I can't even. It's going around in loops. But um, I'm signing off. I hope to have your support. Can Crystal say I love you? Crystal? Crystal? Please look after me and my dog. Crystal? 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 Can you say, I love you? Can you say, I love you? I love you. Crystal? I love you. Do we love our supporters? We love them. I love you. You can't kill me, and if you do kill me, you can't take my soul because that's mine. Ed gets to look after the dog, and if any hitmen come after me, um, this is the reason why I'm dead. It's not because I died of um, mental illness or um, drug abuse or any other fucking thing they've tried to frame me with. And I predict that now that I've stood up for myself and made this public appeal to the public in which I may be supported independently, independent of the government which is ruthlessly attacking me by proxy, they will frame me with another crime um, um, and I'll be either incarcerated, for which I've been threatened to be locked up indefinitely as a prisoner of the state. <laughs> That's how the government treats free thinkers. And, um, or I'll be, I'll be defined for a crime and whatever they pin me with, it's got to be way less than a huge national conspiracy to kill me, which has already happened, and then cover it up, but then desecrate him more. I can't go on. I could, but I won't. I hope to have all your support. It's Rich McLean, artist, author, advocate, human rights champion, fucking legend. Still got a sense of humour. Um, and I'm a fucking doctor, you know? Doctor of philosophy. There you go. Dr. Dick, you can call me. That's what I tell all the young cubs. And um, signing off. Thank you for your support. Go to the website, killim.info. I really need your help the public's help and I um, and I hope to gain it because I predict the government won't because I've already spoken to the Attorney General and unless this frames the government publicly to act um, I don't know what will happen to me <laughs> it's urgent um, I'm happy with, with really no attachments and nothing it's quite freeing, liberating actually but um, anyway Signing off, I hope to have your support, okay? Okay, cheers. Love to you all. Bye.